Hello everyone. Happy Wednesday, happy hump day. Good morning. Hope everyone is doing well this morning. This Wednesday morning. What is today? What is today? Uh, what is today? December. December 2nd. Okay, today's date is December 2nd. What is today? Usually we respond as the day of the week. All right, so what is today? Today's Wednesday. What is today's date? In this case, December 2nd. Remember the ordinal numbers, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, when you're, uh, when you're saying what the day is. In your podcasts, when you're stating the date, try to keep that in mind. Remember the ordinal numbers, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, so December 2nd, November 30th, con TH, final. So try to remember that when you're um, when you're stating the date. I think it's a good idea to do that uh, for your podcasts. And we talked a little bit yesterday. Uh, we saw Monica's uh, public podcast. I recommend and encourage everyone to really f have the confidence to publish in some way or another their episodes publicly. And I hope that you choose at least some of your podcasts um, in your portfolio when you're thinking about different artifacts to include. Remember, artifacts can be anything. Artifacts are simply objects that you're including, in this case, in an online space. It could be documents, it could be Word documents, it could be PDFs, it could be audio files, video files, right? Anything that you could op upload as a file We'll talk more about that today after our listening practice, after our TOEFL listening practice. And uh, I want to give you an example of, uh, of me trying to uh, create a video of my e-portfolio. Although I don't call it an e-portfolio, it essentially is an e-portfolio. So we'll look at an example. Hopefully that will help. And we'll have some time today to work in teams and individually on our own uh, video and on our own homepage. We'll be talking about that today as well. What to include, maybe what not to include in your homepage, that first page that your audience is going to go to when they open up your e-portfolio. We'll talk about that today also. Um, we'll start at about 8.15, as we always do, and I've uploaded the abbreviated, the short version of the audio for today's TOEFL review in the temp folder. So for those of you who like to download the audio beforehand, I would recommend that you use this video because I have shortened it if you compare it to the audio that you listened to beforehand, if you did listen to beforehand. Speaking of which, I'm sharing my screen, so hopefully you can see it. Try. Bring over the results of the survey that we that I asked you to complete yesterday. 24 of you responded, so that's about 60% of the whole group. And here are the responses. And you can access the same file yourself in the Notion page that I shared with you in the chat today. The first question, choose the strategies you employed coming into today's listening and speaking class. So 16 of you responded that you did not listen to the audio. Six Mentioned that you listened to the audio, uh, looks like only before the class. Yeah, I don't recall exactly the, the exact description of that. Um, some of you listened to the audio before. So, so it looks like eight of you in some way looked at some of the audio or the questions beforehand. And I want to draw your attention to this list of strategies one is not necessarily better than the other the best strategy is the one that's going to be the best for you so even though 16 of you didn't listen to the audio before that could be if that's working for you 
right? In the sense that you are gaining more confidence and you feel that you're understanding little by little more of the questions over time by not listening to the audio, then great. That is the best strategy for you. If you haven't seen, or maybe in the future, you continue not to see any improvement and you're and you uh, continue not to listen beforehand, right? Then that that's an indication that maybe another strategy would be better for you. Now, I realize that you haven't done, I haven't made this available throughout the whole semester, but the point here I want to make is that these strategies, you need to pay close attention to what works for you, what strategies, what you're doing, Right, so that you can make a decision. Uh, should I continue doing what I'm doing in terms of the way that I take notes, the way that I implement different strategies, or should I change and do something differently? And you might even reach out to your teachers if you're not even sure certain strategies that you could do. You could even request or ask for uh, some suggestions about how you could implement other strategies, right? But um, in my classes, I try to offer as many strategies as possible related to our class so that you can choose. Here's the second question. How many times did you listen to the audio before today's in-class TOEFL review? Again, this was last, this was Monday. Um, here it looks like 19 of you, almost all of the respondents replied zero. And that makes sense because of how most of you answered here along the top. Five of you listen to it once. Okay, that's fine. And did you take notes? Of course, for before the TOEFL, of course, most of you are going to say no because you didn't listen to it. Uh, taking notes during the TOEFL, m I guess the majority of you did take notes in some way. Uh, 14 of you replied yes. Four, uh, 10 of you replied no. Okay, so again, these strategies... Uh, are going to be different for, for everyone. But I will make one comment about taking notes. I think this is a little bit different. And I want to encourage you to at least be open, especially those 10 of you, or maybe there are more, that are choosing not to take notes. And I want you to be open to the idea that as you gain uh, proficiency, because it could be related to your level, it could also be just... Um, the way that you take notes, but there, there is a lot of research that suggests that taking notes, learning how to take notes, and listening at the same time is an effective strategy. All right, so even though it may not work for you at right now, uh, keep an open mind and think about how you can improve your note-taking abilities uh, later, especially in other classes, because this is not just for a listening exercise, right? This is when you're in class, maybe next year, when you're taking other courses, maybe that are uh, a little bit more challenging, that having a way to take notes, right, and review those notes and turn those notes into a guide as uh, like a, a test guide or just a review is a valuable, valuable skill set. I mean, it really is going to help you uh, taking notes. Right? So try to find the way that works for you. Keep an open mind about the idea of taking notes. Even though maybe you feel it doesn't work, that it's not helpful, really consider, um, at least later on, that this is a, a viable option. This is a good option for you uh, to to incorporate in your other classes. All right, so this uh, this was the short survey, and th this was just something I was curious about. I'm going to share these results with you. Feel free to take a look at these strategies, these results in today's class in Notion. It's right here. Hopeful listening strategies. There's a PDF file that you can access if you want to take another look at that. All right, we've got a few more minutes. Anybody have anything you want to get off your chest? Did we talk about that idiomatic expression to something you want to get off your chest? 
Anything you want to say? Yeah, Any comments? Are you guys ready to complete the first semester of your academic career? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In a word, yes. Well, the good thing I was thinking... It was um, exciting, but weird. Sorry, go ahead. I just say that May you... it's exciting, weird. Yeah, it's weird, right? This whole pandemic has been a weird for, for everyone, very stressful. So I think it's really... It was important to, to really connect with those around you and make sure that you're... You know that you're connecting with everyone and uh, just trying to take care of yourself and your family and your friends and and it'll it'll pass but we just need to try to keep our wits about us in the sense that we are continuing to really try to get the most out of this experience right so even in school this is not the ideal situation being online, but it's really about what you guys do day to day. And I hope that you can see that what you guys can do, even with these challenges that we face, some of the things that you've achieved in your classes this first semester. And for me personally, as your instructor for this class, my hope is that you look back af after this, over this semester, and you feel that you got the most out of the situation, that you did your best and that you tried to participate as much as possible, asking questions, and you have that degree of satisfaction that you did the very best that you can do, and that you are exposing yourself as much as possible to the English language as often as possible, because that's, that's the trick. That's how you're gonna get better. And it's not always obvious one day to the next. Oh, I'm all of a sudden now I'm, I'm better than I was yesterday. It's not like that with language, learning a language. You can go weeks without really noticing any difference. And then all of a sudden, you're going to feel like, wow, I can now understand a little bit more of the audio where before, after, you know, 30 seconds, I was lost. Now, after a minute, I, I'm st I can still follow, right? And those are small, and you may think, well, that's a small change, but that's, that's how it works. It's incremental, but it's not, it's not consistent. It's not like, you know, every day you're going to, it's not like a math skill where you're building math skills almost on a daily, weekly basis, and you can, and one thing allows you to do something else. It's, it's just, it's a little bit more chaotic um, than that, so... Um, that's really my hope for you guys is that you look back and you feel that you did the very best given the situation, given the challenges that we face. That's my hope. Thank you, teacher. No, it's not really what, what we do. It doesn't matter who I am, who your teachers are and a lot of, in, in, in many aspects, really, it's about what you get out of this, the, the, the experience. You know, we can all, the only thing we can do is provide you an opportunity <clears throat> to, to, to engage, to, to do something, right? So it's really up to you to really try to get the most out of all of the experiences. And, all right, my friends. We can chat a little bit more after our listening. It's almost 8.15. I shared the link, so please go ahead and op upload or open your browser to the page if you haven't done so already. And when, it, when the clock strikes 8.15, if you could just confirm, please, that you can access the questions. Get started here in a sec. All right, go ahead at this time. Make sure that you have submitted your responses. I'm going to keep uh, to today's TOEFL review, the online uh, review questions. I'm going to keep that open until 10 o'clock. I know some of you were having some issues getting online in class. Uh, I know myself, 
uh, when I got in this morning to Microsoft Teams, it was a little bit different. So I think there must have been some sort of update, and that might explain why uh, some of us were having some issues with accessing files yesterday in class. So uh, that might be why. So maybe there's some updates going on behind the scenes with Microsoft. So go ahead and submit. I will leave this open. So for those of you who are probably uh, taking this quiz locally on your computer and probably not in the class right now, I'm going to keep it open. And uh, we'll continue with class, and probably we'll have some folks come in a little bit later, those who were having some issues. So I'm um, sharing my screen here. I want to bring up the Notion page. And I want to continue our activity that we started yesterday, where you were working in teams in discussing and sharing ideas about what to include in your video. This is going to be your introduction video that's going to be placed in your home page in your ePortfolio. Remember that your video should do two things. Number one, it should introduce yourself. And number two, it should introduce your ePortfolio. So what I'd like to do is spend uh, just very quickly, I want to attempt to do the same uh, so I can show you an example of perhaps what some things to do and perhaps even some things not to do. So you can evaluate my own performance to see how well I, I do what I'm asking you all to do. So I'm going to open up my ePortfolio. And my ePortfolio is not actually called an ePortfolio. I call it in the classroom. But you can do the same. You can, uh, you can choose to call your online space whatever you'd like. If you want to call it an ePortfolio, fine. If you want to call it something else, great. But I, I typically refer to it as an ePortfolio, um, but it doesn't mean that you have to call it that. You can title it whatever you would like and you can have a and you can name it you can link it to your podcast if you want um, this is your own online space right so it is for professional purposes should be for something that you want to share and what you can do the skills that you have but you have some flexibility in how you want to title it all right so i'm going to attempt to create a introduction. Now, the only thing that's different here is that I'm, I'm not sharing my, my screen, and I'm not sure if I can do that since we're in Microsoft Teams. Although I have my camera activated, um, imagine a, you know, my face here in the corner, the bottom corner, while you're looking at my screen. So remember yesterday we talked about two ways that you could create your video. You could show your entire face in the video and talk, uh, you know, introduce yourself and introduce your page. Or you could share your screen with maybe a, a kind of a picture in picture view of your face, maybe in the corner. Okay, so you can choose if you want to show your entire face or show a picture in picture uh, insert of your, of your face while you are describing. And not only yourself, but also the page. All right, so I'm going to attempt to do this. And uh, this is my ePortfolio. I'm calling it In the Classroom. And uh, this is what I would do. Now, this is my first attempt. And I'm going to encourage you to make several attempts when you're practicing. And if it helps to write something out beforehand, some notes, great. I would recommend not reading from your notes, however. Make sure that it sounds natural, right? But it doesn't sound like you're reading from the text. All right, so here's my first attempt at introducing myself and my page. Hello and welcome to In the Classroom, making teaching and learning more transparent. My name is Benjamin Stewart, and I am an English language teacher trainer and a researcher. I have research interests in personal learning networks and developing one's own uh, professional uh, skill sets. And I also have interest in researching uh, the writing skill. This page in the classroom is basically my attempt to make my own teaching and learning 
more transparent. And if you scroll down, you'll notice several sections that uh, comprise of this space, this online space. The first being content. Here I have different pages that are accessible uh, to anyone. And I also have a concept gallery that is basically a global tag or a list of keywords that relates to all of the content across the entire page. So if you're visiting for the first time and you want to search for a specific concept, you can click on the concept gallery and find that information. Further down, we have open courseware. Since I teach in a BA program, the courses that I teach, much of what, uh, what I do and what are my students do are, is online. And so here we have different courses that are, uh, that are for enrolled students. Below that, I have information related to my podcast, also entitled In the Classroom, which includes also a link to a YouTube channel. And here we have a calendar view of all of the content that goes into this online space. So that might include coursework, but it also might include other actions that relate to the podcast. All of that information is found in this calendar view. If you're interested, you can also view additional um, ways of accessing the same content. Uh, and currently there are three different views available if you want to change the view and access that information. Further down, I have inf information related to research. So these are research projects that I've uh, been working on. And then resources. Resources are basically just links, uh, different uh, open educational resources that uh, I've either developed or that I'm linking here that I think are relevant to this online space. So the, purposes, the purpose of this website is to make my own teaching and learning more transparent and attempt to also learn how other teachers or other educators and trainers are doing the same. If you'd like to share your own experiences, feel free to reach out to me at my Twitter handle at B-N-L-E-E-C. And uh, enrolled students, students who are taking classes with me, uh, have already been instructed to uh, how they can contact me uh, privately for anything related to our coursework. But uh, this is my class. This is my online space. Again, welcome. Thank you for visiting this space and uh, uh, encouraging everyone to make their own teaching and learning more transparent. All right, so more or less, that's, that's the idea, right? And you could hear there were some mistakes. There was kind of some hesitations. And you know, so don't be overly critical of your performance as long as you get the, the idea across that you're introducing yourself, you're introducing your, your, um, uh, you're introducing your space, your e-portfolio. Now, notice I didn't go into any of the individual pages, right? So I, I suggest that you don't, open up and this is not a, a tour of your whole um, of your whole page right and so you want to just show the main page and I know that uh, you're just starting off so you're not going to have a lot of content in there but it's just to describe how your content how your information that you have is organized remember we talked about perhaps organizing by the different strands that make up the BA. Remember, we have a strand that is specifically for English development. So maybe you have a section or a sub page that only has content related to your English language development, speaking and writing for the mainly. But it could also be the reading skills, culture and culture as well, and any type of skill development that you have um, accomplished right, for, for the semester, and that's something you could include. Remember, we also have a strand for applied linguistics. Even though you haven't had any classes there, you could go ahead and set up a page um, or some uh, link in your navigational menu that mentions applied linguistics with the idea that you could say, you know, later that this information will be included there. Remember, you have a strand that's related to uh, teaching methodologies. So teaching theory, that could be another sub page. Finally, you have the practicum strand and that, 
That's going to be really important so that later when you get into the practicum courses, you can begin sharing some of your successes and some even some of your challenges when you want to share what you learned from those challenges in your ePortfolio. Right? So those are the four main strands that you could think about in how you organize your content. But make sure that the main page that you have is notice I don't have any specific content here. This is all um it's a it's it's information. It's it's like a roadmap. It's all links to other places. Like if I click here, this is going to go to another page. And so I don't have any specific artifacts in the home page. And that's the one thing I want to remind everyone that I would not include any specific artifacts. Let's say you uploaded a, a podcast video um, from last, you know, from you know last week. You probably want to create a, a dedicated space for speaking, right? And then part and within that space, you can share your podcast or any other activities that you did that represent or show off your speaking abilities. All right, so this is the idea, guys, for the uh, the video. Now, there are many ways that you can record the video, and I'm going to share with you in the chat. Let me open this. Let me see if I can up a page here. Some software, and we, we've talked software before, um, and it's going to depend on, I guess, if you're using a computer or if you're doing this on your phone, if you're going to create a video on your phone. But let me, if I can open up a page here. One, let's see here, Stream Labs OBS. Okay. So we've talked about OBS as a way to record your screen. But I found another app that I almost like better. And I've been using this app every day to record our classes. This is called Streamlabs. It's a free software. I think it's available. Uh, I know it's available for Windows. I think Mac as well. Um, but it's fairly easy to create or record your screen. And you can insert your your a camera. So you could do a picture-in-picture -picture, or you could show your whole face. Um, this is an app that that I like. You can also use OBS, which we've discussed before. If anyone else has suggestions on apps, please share in the chat. Okay, if uh, any apps that you use to record your screen, OBS and Streamlabs, I like. I've used them and I'm uh, comfortable using those. But if you have some other apps, go ahead and share in the chat. You can also I don't know if you can you can record directly to YouTube. If you guys have a YouTube channel, I'm going to open up mine here and see what options uh, we have. I think the problem with that is I think you can show your, your screen, but maybe not. I mean, I'm sorry, you can show your camera, but you're not able to do a, a screen share. Get in here real quick. What other apps are you guys using to record your screen? Um, I use Teams uh, for the other two videos. For the last two videos, um, I use Teams. Yeah, of course, we you can use Teams, right? Yeah, that we that's probably, in fact, the maybe for many of you, the easiest way to do that. Certainly use Teams if that works for you. Just an individual video that you create create yourself uh, sharing your screen. That's also, of course, a, a good option. Uh, video editors. Any suggestions about video editors? I like Caden Live. This is an open source free software. Used it for many years. And there might be some uh, video editors on your phones that you might be more familiar with. All right, this is, would be for like just basic cuts. 
if you want to get fancy and and create titles and really personalize it uh it's not required and and probably if i'm going to do the same i'm going to add a video to my uh space i'm probably not going to do that i'll just probably show my whole face but you know you guys decide how you want to do this this is uh, your own space so you have some flexibility in how it should look but remember that it should keep it professional uh, just keep thinking about that potential principal who uh, were you know at a school that you want to work ends up looking at your e-portfolio to make a decision about whether or not to hire you all right keep that in the back of your mind even though maybe that may or may not be an immediate uh, concern for you. Uh, keep that in mind at this point so that you are aware of uh, the importance of keeping it formal, keeping it professional. All right, so um, go ahead and what I would recommend is go uh, continue working in your teams and brainstorm, maybe share each other's home screen, get some ideas about what to include in your home screen, maybe what to move out of your homes, your uh, main home page. And uh, again, try to avoid including any artifacts in the home page. Try to create a sub page where you have a subsection where you would go to another page to access certain types of content that you're including in your online space. All right, guys, any questions about what we're doing here, our activities for today and what we started yesterday. No. Um. Okay, so go ahead and go ahead and work in your teams. If you guys are ready to record your videos, go ahead and do that. You can take this time to do that. Just communicate with your team members, you know, share uh, each other's uh, ideas about what you're doing so that you you get some different perspectives so it's not just what what I'm suggesting but maybe you have some other suggestions that you've talked about with your team members that makes more sense for your own personal e-portfolio all right so I'm gonna go ahead and mute my mic guys go ahead and get into your teams continue this activity and we'll come back here in about 20 minutes about 940 to close the class all right, it's 940. I think we'll go ahead and close uh, for today. Uh, just a quick summary. What are some key points that we need to think about when we're creating our video and we're looking and considering what to include in our homepage? Just to summarize. Can you repeat the question, please, teacher? Sure. What are some things to think about and to include in the video that we will place in our homepage? That's one. And what should we include or not include in our, our homepage? Anybody have some ideas to kind of summarize what, we, what we've been discussing uh, the last couple of days? Uh, maybe we... Uh, we can add or we can attach a video talking about uh, or like introducing the portfolio, uh, the portfolio or the uh, the directions or all of the places uh, that person can go mm -hmm. to find uh, the artifacts or the activities mm -hmm. we are going to be performing during this major. Uh, sorry, by uh, because of the noise backwards. Um, That's all right. And maybe showing our faces, uh, talking about this, or maybe sharing our screens. That's actually what I did because my camera of my computer uh, doesn't work. So, so I try to to share my screen. Um, while talking about this um also maybe a, a little description about myself uh, like uh, my name maybe the age uh, and probably the university i'm studying in 
and and yeah that's that's it we, yes uh so introduce yourself introduce your page remember not to include anything that you don't feel comfortable sharing remember this is going to go out to the world so uh, you want to introduce yourself, but don't uh, don't share anything that you don't feel comfortable uh, having the whole world know about yourself. Um, the the last thing I'll mention uh, for your home pages, make sure that you're not including any specific artifacts like uh, podcasts, for example, or documents in in the home page. Okay, I'll try to create a separate subpage that will be more dedicated to that type of information or content. All right, guys, any other questions about the uh, activity for this week? Uh, did you have a question? Yes. <clears throat> uh, how long does the video have to be? I don't want to give you guys a time uh, for the, the video, uh, I'd rather you just focus on introducing yourself, introducing your space, maybe take a look at the example that I provided today in class as more or less an idea about what to, to consider. And I'll leave it up to you how long it needs to be. Now, I will say it shouldn't be like really long. Um, and so, but yeah, I... When I, when I look at your videos, I may give you some feedback. I may say, well, maybe you can talk a little bit more about this or less about this, depending on what you say. Um, but yeah, I, I want to leave it open in, in terms of the exact amount of time so that you're not think so you're not trying to put information into a three minutes, for example. Um, I'd rather you be thinking more about what you want to say instead of how long you need to say it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks, teacher. You, you bet. Any other questions, my friends? Me, teacher. Yes. Uh, well, for example, I, I had a problem with my computer, so I'm working in my cell phone. So I was wondering if I I do the, the video. Uh, if I'm not able to share my face, at the same time that I'm sharing the my, the content of my uh, e-portfolio, it doesn't matter. No, that's fine. Because you sure you can use your your uh, phone to show just your face talking and include the, your a video of just showing your face. That's perfectly fine. That's that's a good option. Um, you know, I I would recommend if you have a camera that's working, if you're uh, if it's available to have a video of yourself. But if you're not able to access a camera and not show your face, and you just show your screen, that's okay. But I think it really personalizes it when you're able to see the person's face speaking, whether it's the whole screen or maybe it's a picture-in-picture -picture of the video, maybe off to the corner and we're looking at the screen. It just personalizes a little bit, um, and it really, I think, uh, motivates the, the audience to be more engaged in what you're saying when, they're, when you know, they can see you. But, of course, if, if that's an issue, if that's a problem, then that's, that's fine, no problem. Um, but do what you can. A lot of different ways you can do it, you can, uh, as far as producing your video. All right. Okay, we'll try. And 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 we have to do like uh, I did my e-portfolio in Google Sites, and I don't know if you seen uh, there is an option that says like do another page, but in the same e-portfolio. And, and for this video, we have to do like that another page or in the same main page. I don't know if you understand me, but I don't know how to explain it. All right. Um, so it, and tell me if I answer your question. So within Google Sites, you can create multiple sites, right? You can create more than one site. For your ePortfolio, you want to create one Google site that will be your one ePortfolio. Now, within your Google site within your ePortfolio, when you go inside the 
the uh, the site, you will have an option to create multiple pages within that site. And so what I'm referring to is like when you um, upload, let's say, a podcast episode, you'll probably want to include a separate page, right, for, um, you know, artifacts that relate to your speaking ability instead of having a having those uh, podcast on the main page. So you you can create multiple pages within a Google site and that's what I would recommend for uh, creating an ePortfolio, uh, not necessarily a, a separate site. Did, does that answer your question, Fernanda? Yes, teacher. Okay. So it's the same it's the same ePortfolio or we have to do another one. I know it's the same uh, ePortfolio. The the okay. I, the the same ePortfolio and I'm not sharing my screen but um and we can talk about this again tomorrow but remember guys a couple of weeks ago I asked you to send me a link of your ePortfolio. That is the ePortfolio that you know that you're probably going to use, you know, going forward, right? So the idea is that you create a space that's permanent that you are maintaining and changing and adapting as you adapt as a professional and so that you're you're not going to create like a separate e-portfolio for every class for example right that it's one e-port it's one portfolio it's one space and you know you use you include anything that you do in any of your courses not just this class you include it in that one space now, of course, if you change your mind next week or now you say, you know what, I, I thought about using Google Sites, but now I want to use a different website. Great. That's fine. Make those decisions now where you don't have, when you don't have a lot of information to move over, right? But really try to think long term. Do I want to work in Google Sites for the next, you know, years, you know, multiple years um, and, and, uh, the, and make the best decision, you know, the, the decision that you think is is best for you. Um, but yeah, I have no problem if you change services as long as, you know, that you let me know so that I have a list. I'd like to keep all of our e-portfolios in one list. But yeah, it's one e-portfolio. Okay, teacher, thank you all right. very much. You're welcome very much. Any other questions, my friends? Mm -hmm. No. No. All right. Well, uh, let. Actually, teacher. Yes. Uh, just a quickly question. Yeah. Uh, you said uh, right now you said uh, move over, and I'm. Ah, uh, uh, I wonder what this um, what it means. Okay. When I say move over, I could I could use it. For example, I could say, okay, you have let's say you have documents and files in one on Google Sites, and you say, you know what, instead of Google Sites, I want to use Notion for my ePortfolio. So you can use the phrasal verb, move over, means you're basically copying and pasting all of the content from one space, Google Sites in this example, over to Notion. So you're moving it over. You could also use it like on a table, you have a, a glass on a table, and you move, you move it over, you can move it across the table. You can move it over, out of the way. It's also used in that sense to move some physical object and reposition it to a different location on the same, for example, a table or, or something like that. So that's uh, the phrasal verb that I used, to move over, to move some content from one place to over to another. Can you guys still hear me? Okay, I'm not sure if I if you guys can hear me, but I have some message on my screen it says hold on and I can't hear you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and close class. I think uh, we're experiencing some updates and some issues with Teams. So we'll stop there for today, guys. Okay, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay, some weird things are going on with Teams. So I think Microsoft's doing some updates of some kind but uh, anyway all right guys we'll stop there uh, for today 
And uh, tomorrow we'll continue working on this. We're going to be talking more about your ePortfolio. So uh, get your questions together if you have some. Uh, keep working on your ePortfolio. We really want to uh, clean up our ePortfolios, really uh, make some changes to it to make it uh, more professional. And uh, tomorrow uh, we will uh, include our, our video. If you have a chance to do it before class and upload your video to your ePortfolio, try to do that. Otherwise, you can do it in class tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we'll continue on with your ePortfolio. All right, guys. We'll stop there. Thank you. Have a great day today, and we will see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, Thank you teacher. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Have a nice day. Thank you. You too.